Welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six Toastmasters official speeches. Or alternatively, if you have substantial relevant presentation experience, you may apply for membership after demonstrating your abilities in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role. If you have one, right click and select rename to do so. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to, due to cultural differences. Please note that we will be recording this meeting. Your video and audio contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Please welcome our club president, DTM, Andrew Byrne. Hello, everyone. At this point, we are beginning our meeting. Thanks to Carolina's wonderful opening for us. Many of us have experienced the fact that we had recent elections and get ourselves set up. We have 23 days left to the end of Toastmasters fiscal year, and we look forward to finishing off our year well, as well as entering the new year. Uh, we have done accomplished a tremendous amount this year, and I'd like to congratulate David for running contests that we've had, and we're having one next week, and David, I'm sure we'll talk about it some more. For those that haven't received the note, David's had some information about a course that he's doing uh, using our site for those that are looking at setting up other clubs. So there's a lot of stuff happening. For those that are officers for this coming year, incoming year, be aware that Toastmasters likes to enhance the likelihood of success by encouraging all incoming officers, as well as all Toastmasters, to attend a training session, which makes a lot of sense. If you want to succeed, you go to the training that will enhance your capability of success. And so we'd like to encourage everybody, whether you're an officer or not, to attend those meetings. More information will be coming forth on that, and I just want to get into the meeting. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Andy. We have an event the next week, and David wants to share some details with the club and with the people who is, who is going to watch this video later. <laughs> Welcome, David. Okay. Yes, next week is the invitational edition of our webinar contest, which I have been, been trying very hard to, to build up and make into a big deal. Uh, we, you know, we had a, a webinar contest with our club members a few weeks ago, and that was a pretty big deal too. But building on that, we're inviting in guest speakers from other clubs, and they're supposed to dazzle us with their mastery of the virtual stage. And we're, we're gonna be officiating, welcoming them. Uh, our members won't be competing next week. But we wound up with eight entries, eight completed entries, a couple where people didn't submit a video to go with it. But, they were asked to submit some kind of video showing themselves speaking and uh, hopefully making a strong impression in a virtual format. Uh, and so what I'm asking the club members to do over the next few days is to vote on those. And, and so I'm, I'm sorry if that was confusing, Evie. Yeah, no, we're not, we're not gonna do it live during the meeting tonight. Uh, I sent out the, the video recordings and then each of you gets an individualized digital ballot. And I thought I would show the digital ballot 
previously. And actually, I'm, I'm doing that partly so that you get a little bit of experience for that. So if you're a judge for next week's com contest, you, you know how this works. So just real quick, uh, this is what the ballot form uh, looks like. It says this is the voting form for demo judge. So that should be your name up top, unless I've sent you the wrong link, which would be bad. The idea is you go through and you score according to these criteria. Now, actually, for this initial screening, I have just a shortened list. Are they a good speaker? And do they seem to have some online presentation skills? But you know, the, we, we can't really expect that they will have completed a speech according to our particular format. So they were really told to, to send us any speech that's gonna make a strong impression on the folks doing the screening. So I want you to do is look at those videos and I actually don't necessarily expect you to watch the whole video. You may watch a minute of it and say, yeah, I kind of know how this is gonna go. Um, when I did it this morning, I watched the beginning and then I jumped ahead a little bit and said, is this gonna get any better? Um, and if it wasn't, then then I didn't rate them as high. So there is the, the, the scoring that you can do just to kind of keep track as you go through and score people according to a standard plan. And the idea is that if, if this person really knocked my socks off and I give them, you know, 70 and 23, well, then they'll pop to the top of the list. And so this is your guideline for who ranked the best. And then what really counts is you need to come down to the bottom and vote for your top three choices. So it was what? So, Roxanne and whoever was third. You're supposed to type your name to sign it and then click on the button that says vote. And when you click on vote, it should say it's been recorded. Um, and actually this, you can ignore this. This says checking to see if it's been received by the chief judge. So during a live contest, I'd be watching to make sure that stuff came in and this would kind of confirm that I've already seen it. Uh, in this case, don't worry about that. Just, just close the window once you see this confirmation that's been recorded and that these are my votes. Uh, you know, that, that was the vote of Testy Tester. Uh, Testy Tester is about to be eliminated as a judge, so his vote won't count, uh, but yours will. Uh, and so I'd like a reasonable number of members of the club to vote in this thing over the next couple of days. Um, once at least 10 people have voted or by the end of the business day on Thursday, I'm gonna notify the six people who were invited. And I'm gonna invite the, the other people um, the runners up to come too, because we may get a last minute cancellation, all sorts of things could happen. Uh, so, uh, but we think six is about the maximum that we can fit into the evening without making it a long night. So, um, and I think that'll make for a good contest. There, there are some very strong speakers and presenters. So I think we're gonna have fun with this, um, but uh, just help me out with that over the next couple of days. Uh, and if you, if you didn't get, you should have gotten something that says important for your role in the contest, judge. And that includes the video links and the, the digital ballot link. If you didn't get that, let me know and I'll, I will make sure to get that to you. Back to you, Carolina, on with the meeting. Thank you, David. You rocked with the online system you created to organize the contest. And I'm looking forward to our contest next week. Everyone is invited. And now it's time to start our meeting. Just give me one second to share something with you. Today, I want to talk to you about change management. I chose change management as the theme of this meeting and as the theme for the tip of the day, 
the reason is because I work in technology and change management is extremely, extremely important to implement a new digital tool or to achieve any degree of digital transformation in any company without the support of end users, you cannot succeed. And many times we don't give this matter the importance that it deserves. The steps I'm going to mention in this tip of the day can be useful for any change you are trying to implement in any place. Business must constantly evolve and adapt to meet challenges from technology advancement, advancements to update laws and regulations to shifts in economic trends. Research shows that half of all organizations change initiatives are unsuccessful. It's vital for business leaders to know how to plan, coordinate and implement change. Change can include culture, internal processes, underlying technology or infrastructure or hierarchy. Change management is the process of guiding change from conception to resolution. What happens between this dynamic and unfolds in a series of five steps. Step one is preparing for change. In the preparation phase, the leader of change helps people recognize and understand the need for change. He or she raises awareness of the challenges or problems driving in the change. Step two, is crafting a vision and plan for, for change. The plan should detail strategic goals, key performance indicators for measuring success, stakeholders responsible for implementation, and the project scope. Step three is implementing change. During implementation, change managers focus on motivating and empowering the people involved to achieve the initiative's goals. They should also try to anticipate roadblocks and prevent, remove, or mitigate them once identified. Reiterating the organization's vision is critical throughout the implementation process to remind team members why change, why change is being pursued. It's Step four is embedding change within the company culture and practices. This is particularly, this is very important for organizational change related to processes, workflows, and strategies. Without a plan, employees can backslide into the old way of doing things during the transition period uh, as well. And finally, step five reviewing progress and analyzing results. Just because a change initiative is complete doesn't mean that it was successful. A project postmortem can help leaders understand whether a change initiative was a success, a failure, or a mixed result. It can also offer value, valuable insights and lessons for future efforts. Key questions to ask during this step include, were project goals met? If yes, can this success be replicated elsewhere? If not, what went wrong? If you've been asked to lead a change initiative or would like to oversee such projects in the future, it's critical to develop skills that prepare you to do the job. Summarizing the steps are preparing, crafting a vision and plan, implementing, embedding, and reviewing progress and analyzing results. I hope this presentation was useful for you. And now I would like to present the people who is going to be helping me in this meeting. The first person is our timer. He's going to be today, David Carr. Welcome, David. Thank you, Carolina. I guess I should have been timing that. I didn't realize right away that that was going to be our tip of the day. Um, but um, throughout this meeting, I will show colored lights uh, instead of my face. Uh, you will see, you should see in a moment, green. 
and then uh, Janus is yellow and animal is red at the intervals of the minimum time, the partway along the way time, and the kind of wrap it up time. So for table topics, it'll be green at one, yellow at 1.30, red at two. For speeches, actually speeches, are there any speeches tonight that are more than five to seven minutes? But for no. the general, yeah, for the general five to seven minutes, it'll be green at five, yellow at six, red at seven, and then for evaluations, it will be green at two, yellow at 2.30, uh, red at three. Miss Topics Master, or table, <laughs> Miss Toastmaster of the day, thank you. Thank you very much, David. I loved the red, the picture. <laughs> Next, it's our accounter and grammarian. She has today a double role. Welcome, Joni Laidlaw. Thank you, our Toastmaster of the day. As you can see today, I am the Wizard of Oz, and I will be magically scanning for all of those uh, uh, ums, ers, and ums. I have an additional role, um, uh, grammarian. If you look in the gallery view, you will see the word of the day displayed. Now, our word of the day today is embed, and I have embedded an image of the word embed, the definition to fix an object firmly and deeply in a surrounding mass. And I can guarantee in the, ga in the gallery view, it's embedded and used in a sentence embed change within company cultures and practices. And I'll make note of how often, how it's used, if it's conjugated and any missed opportunities. And I'll give the report for both when called upon to do so. Back to your Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much, Joni. The next person who is going to be helping me is the watcher. She is Kim Liming. Hi, everybody. Yes, I am your watcher tonight. So as Marianne Gray always says, I will be watching you and I will be looking because we're an online club. This is a very much an online club type position where I'll just be looking for um, Zoom type things. And yes, I know I already started your accounting role. Sorry about that, Joni. And uh, just looking for, I'm doing it worse than once I say it out loud. I'm looking if you're centered right, looking at your backgrounds, how you're using the space um, when you share screens, things like that. So back to you, Toastmaster of the day, Carolina. Thank you, Kim. The next person is the chat monitor, Evie. Hello, hello, everyone. I am the chat monitor for this evening. I've never been chat monitor before, so this is extra exciting for me. Um, I will be watching the meeting chat and looking out for any particularly, uh, particularly engaging comments or really nice compliments or really fun, just really fun things. But uh, but try your best not to uh, not to chat during people's speeches is all that I ask. Otherwise, uh, please go ahead and engage. Thank you so much. Thank you, Evie, and I will put a link in the chat and you can vote for, you could vote for your favorite. And at the end of the meeting, I will give you the winners. And it's time for my favorite uh, section of the meeting, the prepared speakers. The first speaker is working in the team development path Level one, vocal variety and body language. He's an author, writer, lecturer, and organizer of Toastmasters clubs. He has served in several roles in Toastmasters. Studies have demonstrated a breakdown of certain elements related to their importance in a speech impact. He will tell a story and demonstrate each of these elements. Please welcome our president, Andrew Byrne. Thank you very much, Carolyn. I'll just get my timer up. All right. Let's see if my technology is going to fail me or not. Let's see. Is this showing up? 
Yes. Oh. Turn out. This is an Illuminati slide because it's inside out. It says storytelling. In Toastmasters, all of us want to be involved in telling great stories. But in order to do that, you need to master two things. That is control of your voice and the ability to use your hands, gestures, your face, and have those two things work out together. These are some of the things that we're going to talk about today. And let's see. Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I may learn. These are things that we're going to touch upon during this session. Recently, I went on a trip that included the UK, Scotland, Ireland, Paris. And this is the map inversed of where I went around the country. We saw many different things. My story is how these things impacted me. And I want to let you know that I did not become a skeleton sitting in front of my computer. I wanted to share some of the things. But the first thing is this. Speech requires vocal variety and body language. And in that context, know that there are four issues in vocal variety and four issues in body language. And I'm going to put this slide in the chat so that you have a copy of it. From vocal variety, you have the pitch, you have the tone, you have the pace, and you have volume. Your voice is an instrument. It could be loud, it could be soft. It can have different components to it and it impacts how the speech goes. The next thing that's impactful is body language. In body language, you have posture, you have stance, you have position, and you have movement. All those four components are part of body language. Put those two things together and you enhance your skills of telling your story. One of the things that you need to know about your speech and vocal variety is that your vocal cords are instruments that are impacted by your breathing. And if this works out, I'll show you a little bit about breathing. Let's see, is I'm going to share this particular slide and you'll all recognize it. The slide of Mr. Miyagi and Daniel from the movie Karate Kid. Who saw the Karate Kid? Anybody? And why is this not going? Here we go. All right. This is not happening. So perhaps you'll be able to hear it. The lesson that Miyagi is telling Daniel is this, that breathing is the essence of life. And in order to be able to control your breathing and have your breaths come from your diaphragm, 
It's how you control your breathing. And he goes through this exercise. And I'm going to do that with each of you in a moment. Yes. What I want you to do is stand up and put your hands together. Move it forward as you're taking a deep breath, and then bring it back up and down. What that's doing, it's expanding your diaphragm, pulling the air in so that you have more air, allowing you to speak more loudly and be able to use your pronunciation well and take care of those situations. And that was demonstrated by this movie clip, which is not playing for you now. Apologize about that. But the important thing is that we have four elements of your voice as an instrument that helps expand your activity. It expands and enlightens everybody by your volume, your tone, your pitch, your pausing, and your speed. And you can control all these things. If you control those four elements of vocal variety and four elements of body language, you will be an effective speaker. Back to you, Carolyn. Thank you, Andy, for sharing those tips with us. It's very useful. Our second speaker, he's an advanced and outstanding Toastmaster who loves cruise ships. He is working in a project research and present. And the title of his speech is The Sydney Ducks. Please welcome Graham Kearns. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. Hands up who's heard of the Anaheim Ducks. They're a hockey team out of Anaheim in California. The Beijing Ducks, Chinese basketball team. The Long Island Ducks, they're a minor baseball team. The Oregon Ducks, if you're from Oregon, then you would know about the Oregon Ducks because that's the sports teams of the University of Oregon. And of course, the Mighty Ducks, they're embedded in popular culture via Disney. But I bet none of you have heard of the Sydney Ducks. Quizzical looks is what I'm seeing around the room. And I would get those same quizzical looks if I asked about the Sydney Ducks in Sydney, Australia. And yet the Sydney Ducks were from Sydney, Australia. Sort of. They were a mob of criminals from Australia who were so active in San Francisco, that locals set up a vigilante committee just to get rid of them and changed the method of policing in San Francisco forever. San Francisco, you may or may not know until recently, had a legal, private, detective, private police force in certain wards of the city. This dates back to the Sydney Ducks. San Francisco was really only a very small town before the California gold rush. In fact, in 1847, there were just 492 people in San Francisco. But by 1849, just two years later, it had 25,000. So from 492 to 25,000 in two years, lots of new people included in that 25,000, a gang of crooks from down under, known as the Sydney Ducks. Now, who's surprised that a gang of criminals would come from Australia? Well, given that we were set up, in fact, as a penal colony, uh, and we had convicts and criminals and all sorts here, it's no great surprise that there was a, a sort of criminal subculture in Australia. Ticket of leave men were those that had, those that had served their time and were given a ticket of leave. That is, they could become free men, go out into society. They could move out into the bush and work really hard 
and set up farms and become the, the genesis of a new nation, and many of them did. But quite frankly, some of them were not so happy about hard work, and working on a farm is hard work, I've got to tell you. So they headed off to explore what options there were, and many of them headed to San Francisco, to this burgeoning new town. These Aussie immigrants became so numerous that they dominated the neighbourhood at the base of what is now Telegraph Hill. They opened boarding houses and various types of boozy dive bars known as groggeries, uh, bars that, of course, had prostitutes affiliated with their businesses. Uh, unwilling sailors and miners who went to these knock shops, well, they were frequently beaten and robbed so frequently that the San Francisco Herald thundered against them as newspapers are wont to do, saying, the upper part of Pacific Street after dark is crowded by thieves and gamblers and low men, women, drunken sailors and similar characters. Unsuspecting sailors and miners are entrapped by these dexterous thieves and swindlers that are always on the lookout into these dens where they are filled with liquor drugged if necessary until insensibility coming upon them they fall an easy victim to their tempters when the habitues of this quarter have reason to believe a man has money they will follow him for days and employ every device to get him into their clutches these dance groggeries are outrageous nuisances and nurseries of crime now that's a bit overblown but it's not entirely inaccurate either i mean these were dens of iniquity in the most literal sense of the word and they were made up by denizens of iniquity as well. The Sydney Ducks would often loot San Francisco's neighbourhoods. And one way that they would do that was to set fire to San Francisco. And they did that six times between 1849 and 1851 as cover for their crimes, because if they set fire, everyone would flee and they would go in and Basically, they'd loot. Uh, whenever they planned to start a fire, though, they would wait for southwesterly winds so that Sydney Town, the base of Telegraph Hill, would not also catch fire. And what was the authorities doing to stop this? Well, two thirds of three quarters of diddly squat, apparently. I mean, city fathers in San Francisco were so corrupt that the citizens became enraged. And in 1851, they formed a vigilance committee. Now, this was not just some random lynch mob. That's a tradition that America has had. No, this was an organised quasi-military unit that took over patrolling the streets and replacing the courts. Two of the Sydney Ducks, a couple of men named Samuel Whitaker and Robert McKenzie, were arrested for arson and robbery and burglary. The vigilantes then held a trial and quickly hanged them. The hangings, I might tell you, scared the remaining Sydney Ducks quite a bit. They fled the city and within two weeks of the hangings, Sydney Town had only a few dance halls and saloons and brothels remaining. So it worked, didn't it? Well, not really. Not for long, anyway. Within a couple of years, other gangs and assorted crims had, of course, moved into what had been known as Sydney Town. But it was now renamed the Barbary Coast of, South, of San Francisco to reflect the piracy of the Barbary Coast. And the city's rep as a lawless frontier was back. Uh, while we're talking about San Francisco and ducks and other birds, I, I should tell you about San Francisco's seagulls. Now, these birds, they're a species of tern, officially known as the western gull. They're much bigger than most seagulls, certainly much bigger than the seagulls we see here in Australia. They can measure 70 centimetres long. They've got 1.4 metre wingspans. These things are huge. They can weigh up to 1.4 kilos. They are fat. And they are sassy. And when I was in San Francisco, I loved watching them strutting around as if they are lords of all they can see. But here's the thing. California was, of course, one of the first states in the US to legalize marijuana, and especially San Francisco. You can see discarded doobies everywhere. An unfortunate result is that the Western gull often picks up and ingests these discarded cannabis cigarettes. And that makes me sad, I have to tell you. Because I fear that if this continues, we may never see a turn unstoned. Adam Toastmaster. Thank you, Graham, for sharing your research. I learned something new today. Mr. Timer, are both speakers qualified? Both speakers did very well with their timing. 
Great. Animal had to show up for Graham, but otherwise, all went well. <laughs> Thank you very much, David. I'm going to share a link in the chat, and you could vote for your favorite. In the meantime, I want to present the topic's master of today. She's another outstanding Toastmaster of our club. Please welcome Marianne Grady. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marianne Grady, and I am your Table Topics Master tonight. Table Topics is where we practice our impromptu speaking, and tonight I'm also functioning as the producer of our OP news reports. It's my job to have a series of photographs and news headlines that I will be inviting each of you to come and give a one to two minute news report on. So I hope you're all paying attention because I am gonna call on you. Breaking news, something irrelevant to your life just happened and now this talented group of reporters are going to blow it out of proportion to keep you distracted from what's really happening. Our first reporter of the day will be, let's say, Kim Leeming. Kim, it's your job to report on Ring Your Dog to Work Day. Thank you, Table Topics Master Marianne. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the bring the dog to work day is racist. I have a bird, and I think we should have a bring your bird to work day. But other than that, I love dogs as well, so I'll take back the whole racist comment. But I think we should all bring our pets to work. In fact, I was hoping we could someday incorporate a table topics with our animals and our pets, but. Animals are such a big part of our life and, and our work is such a big part of our life that why not incorporate the two? And you know, who knows? If you have a job as a news reporter, as I am right now, maybe you are put a little microphone in front of your dog and have your dog bark about a story about other dogs or in the case of the bird, the bird could start, start saying things. Like my bird likes to say, what you doing? to ask the people what they're doing and interview them. And, and what about cats? People like their cats. Maybe they should bring their cats to work as well. So thank you very much. Um, I hope we incorporate bring your animal to Toastmasters to online presenters someday. And back to you, Table Topics Master, Marianne Grady. Fabulous report, Kim Leeming. Thank you for that. Our next reporter will be Evie, Evie, you're going to be reporting on the friendly baboon stealing the show at the Lodi Grape Festival. Hello and welcome to uh, OP Toastmasters News. I'm Evie with the latest, and here we have a friendly baboon stealing the show at the local Lodi Grape Festival. Folks, this is unprecedented. This is this is alcohol must have been a factor um, when we arrived at the scene. Uh, it was already absolute mayhem where we've got people running around with their with, like like chickens with, with their heads cut off, um, taking to the streets. This, this is just a terrible tragedy. Um, so 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 let's get right to it. Let's 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 interview the the, the baboon. Uh, hold on. Hold on one second. Hold, hold on. Oh, oh, stop it. Stop. 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 Stop it. Oh, OK, OK, we're back. We're back. Uh, OK, so. Uh, all right, so the, the the baboon is behind the camera now, filming. Uh, hi. Okay, down, down. Good, good baboon. Good. Actually, you're doing pretty well. You're you're doing okay. Okay. Hey, um, do you want a job? Hey, don't. No, no. Come back here. Well, that Thank is reporting, live reporting. That's what happens at these kinds of things. So thank you for sticking with it there, Evie. Our next reporter is Graham Cairns. And now Graham, you are getting a headline and your headline is 
Alton attorney accidentally sues himself. Please enlighten us on this very important case. Thank you. This is all the news that is news that is news, and it's news that's news that yours. News to you. And you know what makes news, by the way? News is when not when a dog bites a man, but when a man bites a dog. And that's what's happened in this particular case. This Alton attorney has accidentally sued himself. You see, what happened was the attorney was supposed to be placing a a, a, a writ, a case. You have different terminology in the US, but basically he was he was going to be suing another man. But unfortunately, when he was doing a cut and paste job, because, of course, like a lot of attorneys, he just does cut and paste and, and says this will do it worked last time and it'll work again. He pasted his own name into the case. And so he now has to sue himself. But the problem is, if he were to withdraw from the case, then. The person that he was suing, that is himself, has the right to demand that they get all of the court fees because that's how the system works in Australia. If you lose a case, you pay the court fees. And so having decided to sue himself, if he withdraws from the case, he will have to pay the court fees. But if he continues to do this and wins against himself, then he won't have to pay the court fees, except, of course, he as himself will have to pay the court fees. And so it is just one of those bizarre cases that could only happen in Australia or maybe in Florida. Yeah, definitely we'll say this could happen in Florida as well. Madam Topics Master. Well, thank you, Graham. My goodness, you have experience, I could tell. Our next reporter is Mr. Jim Barber. Now, Jim, you are going to be talking about the record-breaking heat wave. Thank you, Mr. Topics, Ma Madam Topics Master. My fellow Toastmasters, hey, 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 my fellow Toastmasters, this is bopping, rock, rock and roll and bop and bowl and Big Jim Barber here with the headline news of the day. In today's weather report, we have a record breaking heat wave going across the state of Florida. This is, it is record breaking, both in terms of temperatures and in length. You see, the heat wave started in the late 1800s and it's continuing unabated to the present time. The temperature doesn't isn't constantly high. It simply it, it actually dips down into the 70s, that's Fahrenheit, dips down into the 70s for an hour maybe every two or three weeks. Other than that, it hovers between 90 and 100. And the thing is, it's not so much the temperature as it is the humidity because it's the humidity. You can see right there on the slide that we have of the record-breaking heat wave. It looks like that she's emptying some water out of a glass. She is not. That is simply the humidity that's occurring naturally in the weather as we are there in Florida. Now, you may be wondering what a, what a, uh, a donkey is doing in the state of Florida. We actually do have donkeys in the state of Florida, some of them get elected to political office. And this happens to be one of those people, but I won't identify them because we don't want to get into politics here at Toastmasters. We try to remain apolitical. So that is basically it. That is our political report. That is our weather report. And that is what's happening from the state of Florida. Back to you, Madam Topics Master. Man, you are making me laugh, sir. I am going to invite our next uh, reporter up to the TV screen here, and that would be Andre Smolenko. Andre, I know you to be a very creative news person, and I decided to let you create your own headline. Here's your pictures. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Table, Topics Master. As we can all see on the picture, is um, Her Majesty uh, the Queen uh, passed away with all my respects, and her young grandchild screaming away, and the lady is calm. Hello, I'm Andrei Smolenko, presenter of Old People magazine. Of course, from time to time, we are wondering whether we are going to receive anything, any state benefits from or for old people when we come to their retirement age. However, this lady retired in a way long, long time ago, according to her age. However, 
as we can see, she's still fulfilling her duty with her majestic uh, style. From time to time, when it comes to it, old people have to deal with those nuisance, little, young, screaming and obnoxious princess. And if you want to find out more about how to deal exactly with that type of little creatures, you can follow my blog. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, and of course, I'm on a Toastmaster magazine. So you perhaps ask me a question, how come, Andre, in your age, you became, became an expert, uh, sorry, an expert uh, for the Old People magazine? And I tell you one thing, curiosity. I've always been fascinated with how then people, especially royalty, manage to deal with little creatures like that. And as you can see, the best way to deal with that nuisance is ignore it. So next time, when you deal with Prince, think about Her Majesty the Queen and the way she handled the situation brilliantly. She made that little boy in tears, holding his ears and with grace. Back to you, um, Madam Sable Subix Master. Thank you, reporter on the street, Andre. Now, uh, Madam Toastmaster, do we still have more time? Yes, Marianne, we can have one more. Okay. The next reporter will be Joni Laidlaw. Joni, you have to report on this headline. Starvation can lead to health hazards. Please give us this important report. Welcome to the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation. It's seven o'clock. Do you know where your children are? In other news, it's been reported that not eating can actually lead to health hazards. Who would have thought? For years, my cure for anorexia was skip a meal, two meals, every meal. However, on the scene today, we have our slot with personal experience as to why it's important to maintain the weight. Now our slot, let me know, why is it important to eat? Well, you see, it's important to eat because, well, I got really, really sick and I ended up at the hospital and, and, Unfortunately, our slot just dropped dead and I will have to take this news report to the hospital just to check to see with our doctors what happened. One moment while I find out what's happening here in the emergency room. After consulting with our doctor, we have located the problem. It turns out that the slot didn't eat for a while and unfortunately, he went home to meet his maker. He proved today that not eating will cause a health hazard and you will go home to your maker. Back to you, Marianne. Well, thank you, thank you, Ms. Joni. Now that concludes our news report for this evening. And I wanna thank you all for tuning in and I hope you'll tune in again next week. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Marianne, and thank you to all our reporters. Mr. Timer, Timer, uh, how the time was for all the reporters? All the reporters. Is everyone qualified, qualified? All the reporters were on time. I posted it in the chat. Thank you very much, Mr. Timer. And you could vote for your favorite in a minute. The next section is for receiving and given feedback because feedback is a gift. Please welcome our general evaluator, David Carr. All right, let me rematerialize here for just a moment. As your general evaluator, it's my job to introduce the evaluators. I'll be also timing them along the way. So General part of general evaluator feedback for the next meeting will be we need more members here, <laughs> uh, taking more roles. Uh, but meanwhile, 
we have Jim Barber to give an evaluation of Dr. Andrew Byrne's speech. Jim Barber. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. I'm happy to evaluate Andrew Byrne's presentation this evening. Andy, you are a skilled technical presenter, as you've demonstrated many times in the past. You tackled a topic that was very important, storytelling, and you presented it in a very effectively. You were you were correct and you you had your you had your structure of your presentation well worked out of course your your vocal skills are flawless it was a great presentation except you got scuttled by technology this was an excellent presentation but it technology was your waterloo we were talking to brenda our guest or before the meeting about how technology doesn't always work. And this was a brilliant display of that, demonstration of that this evening. In fact, if you want to take credit for it and say that you did this intentionally to show Brenda exactly how that technology can get in the way, I won't, I won't argue the point. But I'm going to make the assumption, I'm going to address the possibility that maybe this wasn't intentional. And frankly, that was the only flaw that we had in the presentation. Now, you can't really manage that. These things happen. Technology goes wrong. And sometimes, you know, you can't handle it. I like the way that you were doing slides. But for example, one of your slides is indicated up here. You can see that your your shoulder cut off part of the caption of the particular slide, so we couldn't get the joke of what you were describing there. Other times, though, I liked the way that the slides were presented over the shoulder. That was very effectively done. Of course, sometimes you couldn't pull them up. We couldn't pull up the Karate Kid demonstration, and you wanted to do that. The biggest problem, though, with your presentation, and this is something that you could have done something about, it would be difficult, but you can work on it, is as you can see there, you're not looking at the camera. And eye contact, eye contact with the camera is vital, especially in a situation like this. If technology fails you, we all recognize that. It, it Things go wrong. But by establishing eye contact with the camera and so with the audience, you're at least connecting with everybody. And so you're still in having still having the rapport with audience. You could still go through and establish that connection, especially important for something like storytelling that you're not getting if you're looking down like this. Now, I recognize that's a problem when you're trying to, especially when you're trying to correct technology, you're looking down here and you're trying to put pull everything out. Don't do that. As much as you can, look back up at the camera, explain things that are going wrong, look back down, try to fix them, look back up at the camera and talk to us. That's about the only suggestion I've got for you. This was a great presentation. I'm looking forward to your next one. Mr. General Evaluator, or Madam General Evaluator, whichever it was, I lost track. <laughs> you can call me Madam if you want, I guess. But uh, meanwhile, uh, let me invite, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm still off in limbo, but uh, let me invite uh, Toast Mentor Andres Malenko to give his feedback for Graham Cairns. Thank you very much, Mr. General Evaluator, uh, fellow my presenters, and most importantly, Graham. Uh, what a great speech uh, based uh, on your projects. Projects is uh, presentation mastery level three, and the task was to research and present your speech on any subject, and you've done it masterfully. What I really like about you, Graham, is you're a skillful storyteller, and I could listen to your stories for hours, hours in a row. I really like your engagement, your hand gestures, your local variety is impeccable, and a really, really strong opening uh, about Sydney Ducks. You ask about ducks from different countries, whether anyone could hurt them. And then you brought that bombshell. Sydney ducks is not the birds that we were thinking about. It's a gang of mobsters. It's an organized crime gang from Australia who were ravaging the streets of San Francisco in the 19th century. 
Then you moved into a very detailed and exciting description, in a way, of San Francisco at that time, when the gangsters were following those people and they were praying for them for days until they could get their victim. Your story unfolds in front of our eyes. I could see it step by step, very thoughtful and very well researched. At the same time, I would like to make uh, a few simple recommendations that I hope for the next time you could take into account, which could make your story even more engaging. The recommendation number one, uh, when you, in conclusion to your speech, you brought an additional, um, additional character as seagulls of San Francisco. At the same time, talking about ducks, the gang, and then bringing seagulls. In my mind, even though with some marijuana's connection and other things connection, it's a little bit spoiled, it's diluted. In the end, the excitement of baba moments, the conclusion moments and continuation of the duck's story. I didn't hear it, perhaps you could uh, take into account and for the next speech, you could uh, do it uh, in a different style. The recommendation number two, uh, I just really wanted to see the ducks. I wanted to see at least maybe one or two images of that cruel Australian ducks on the streets of San Francisco. I think that would really expand our imagination. Uh, overall, those two minor, minor recommendations based on a really strong research and well-presented story. Thank you, Graham. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. All right. Thank you, Andre. And yes, you were within time uh, to play my other role <laughs> in speaking. Uh, so uh, those of you who are voting on stuff, please vote for one of our two wonderful evaluators. Let's hear the chat monitor's report. So I remember who was doing that, that was Evie. Yep. All right, we had some lovely compliments uh, for, uh, let me see, uh, let me see for, for David arranging the contests. Uh, it is a really big job and we are all very, very appreciative of it. So I'm very glad to see that uh, come into the chat. Um, we had a, a really good description of the difference between pitch and tone. Uh, Karelina asked um, and uh, and uh, Graham really delivered. Um, and that was something interesting I'd never thought about before, actually, like uh, the difference, the difference between pitch and tone. Like if someone just asked me on the street, came up to me, hey, uh, what's the difference between pitch and tone? I'd be like, who are you? OK, let me think about it. But Graham was like on it. Uh, and yeah, that's interesting tone, uh, like conveys more emotion and pitch is more of a, you know, it's 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 like a small part of it. Yeah. And uh, the Mighty Ducks, uh, like I broke my own, uh, I broke my own ask <laughs> during a speech when my hometown's uh, hockey team was uh, was mentioned, and uh, and I feel like in a more lighthearted speech, I I feel like that's okay. Um, I'm not gonna rules rules lawyer that at all. Um, and uh, just the, the 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 funniness of uh, the 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 turn on stone and the the munchies, the the seagulls getting the munchies, that was wonderful. Um, I think uh, I really, really enjoyed the table topics. I just wanted to say that I made a couple of uh, of chats about that, and I just I really loved it. Oh man, that was so much fun. Um, and yeah, uh, there was there there wasn't a whole lot of disruptive content in the chat during speeches. Just a couple of punctuations I feel were appropriate. Uh, thank you for engaging. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be a chat monitor. Thank you so much. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Evie. And. Let's see, was it Kim that wound up as watcher for today? It was. So thank you. I will give my watcher report now. So I'm going to give the report in what I call Evie style. So as watcher, W is for I've been watching you. A is for Andy Byrne. Andy, I love the way you place yourself to the left 
and then your presentation to the right over your shoulder. It looked great. Awesome job. T is for too cute. And the too cute award goes to, drum roll please, da -da -da -da, David Carr with his timer backgrounds. Muppets for each color is an awesome way to embed graphics. C is for Carolina. Carolina, your slides were great. They were well organized and they were a great example of how you're supposed to create wonderful presentation slides. You use the graphics to enhance your speech rather than to list the words. Great job. The only thing I can say is it'd be nice to see you a little bit larger next to it, but I know that's a limitation of Zoom. H is for hand gestures. And today, Graham gets the award for hand gestures. Graham, you did a great job of using your hands tremendously during your whole speech while keeping them on screen. It, it, was, it was awesome. E is for Evie. Evie, that was the most creative demonstration I have ever seen for the use of a webcam. When that chip took over your reporting and took over that webcam, that was really, really creative and wonderful. And R is for reporters on the street. Marianne, what a wonderful way to present table topics. Your graphics were so much fun and led to really great table topics and just a lot of the graphics were spot on and thank you so much. And back to you, General Evaluator, David Carr. All right. Thank you, Kim, for reminding me that I need to embed the word embed into a sentence. I have too many distractions embedded into my brain, but I, I needed to say that before I introduce the grammarian and our counter for today, Joni Laidlaw. Thank you, our general evaluator slash timer slash person doing multiple roles today as we all are. And in keeping with that fact, I'm going to embed a new way to give the report. I'm going to give a uh, grammarian report. So everything is gonna be all combined in one jet melting pot. I got started off with Kim. Thank you so much. And let me say, Kim, I do appreciate that even though you gave me an and, and you missed the opportunity to embed the diversity in the animals that were brought to work. I like the fact that you made up for it by using the word of the day in your Arcontos report. Now for another missed opportunity that was also picked back up in the second time they appeared. I will say that Graham Carnes did use the word of the day and gave a good example of how it can be utilized for the missed opportunity for Andrew Burns. Now, Andrew, when you were discussing the Karate Kid, you could have also done the same parallel that Graham did to use the word of the day, because we all know wax on, wax off is embedded <laughs> in the mind of everybody who has ever watched that movie. Four, easy. You gave me some so's and ahs, but you did highlight a good grammarian point for me in the chat and it was also chosen to be one of my grammatical phrases that I remembered that Graham used a turn on stone but I like how you use and I'm going to message you in the chat to explain rules of lawyer rule lawyer huh where when educate the grammarian on how that turn of phrase works and what it means so I may be able to use it for future context now, for our Wizard of Oz, though we had a lot of ands, so, and ums, and I did stump Jim today because he didn't even get to throw it in at the end with the word of the day, our Wizard of Oz is distinguished Toastmaster Andrew Burns, but most of that was because of technology. Back to you, our General Evaluator. Great, thank you, Joni. And I think that covers the the basic reports. Other than the winners, do you, do you want to hold that to the to the end, Carolina? Okay. We, we, after, so after I I wrap up my portion of the meeting, 
I'll hand it back to Carolina and she can fit that in with closing remarks and so forth. I did want to share one more thought for, for Andy, which is that in it, in addition to um, you know trying to to make sure you got your technology work at working ahead of time and having it queued up so it's ready to go, I, I, I really think we should try to avoid talking about technology unless we're giving a presentation about how to use technology. So it should be integrated with your presentation. It be, should be part of your speech. And maybe one, and, and so one of the first things you said was, okay, in a minute, I'm gonna see if my technology works for me. So right, right away, you're kind of talking yourself down and undercutting yourself. And one reason for avoiding doing that up front, except when you absolutely can't help it, is that there are those moments where you absolutely can't help it. When you're trying to play the video and the video won't play. So try and have as much as you can queued up and polished and ready to present smoothly so that you make a strong impression because that's what we're after here. The, the goal is not to use as much technology as possible. The goal is to use as much technology as will help us get our message across and communicate in this, this medium. And there's obviously a balance there because we say, this is a place you can come and experiment. And sometimes you're, you know, things are gonna go wrong uh, and you're, you know, you're doing it among friends so that when the stakes are higher, you can execute flawlessly. We hope, right? Uh, so, so that that's kind of the point. And you you might, uh, and I think there is also a balance between uh, using just enough technology and using too much. <laughs> um, so, if, if you're using a bunch of things that you you have trouble with, try and reduce that number down to the minimum number of technical things that could go wrong. Uh, and you know, and, and then maybe increase uh, over time as you master uh, several of them. So that's my lecture about that. But but definitely coming into having our big webinar contest next week, uh, we're, we're hopefully going to see some people who impress us um, with their overall presentation and maybe technology as a part of it. With that. Um, Long-winded explanation, I will hand back to our Toastmaster today, Carolina. Thank you very much, David. Great remarks about our meeting and about everything in general. Um, I would like to tell you that change is not easy, especially if technology is involved. This is an change management is an art and it's a science as well. And I hope you are successful in any change you are trying to apply. It has been a pleasure to serve my club as Toastmaster of the Day. And my last duty is to announce the winners. And the winners are best evaluator, please drums. Andrew Smolenko, woo! Best Table Topics Speaker. And the best reporter was Evie Hartman. And the best speaker, make some noise, he's Graham Kearns, woo! Congratulations to the winners. Mr. President, back to you to close this meeting. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Appreciate David for your insights. One of the things that uh, you have to be careful of that I was not careful of, my stuff tested out okay, but I didn't realize that uh, Zoom dropped a new version, version 5.14.10. And there must have been some sort of conflict with my operating system and the new Zoom number. And because of that, I had some challenges. The bottom line is don't add or update to your stuff before doing a presentation if it was working before. That, that was a lesson I learned. 
Uh, I wanted to uh, have Brenda, who's visiting us, she's not a, a, a member of the club, to give us your impression on what you walked away with from today's session. Well, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, I, uh, the impression that I got is that this is a very well-oiled club. I thought everything went smoothly. Uh, the speeches, all varieties of presentations were very interesting, um, very fun, and I totally enjoyed it. And um, I will probably visit again. Thank you. And you are always welcome, and we welcome you to visit as often as you like. We'd be very excited to have you actually join the club. At this point, we've talked about most of our announcements. David will go in in a few moments and talk more about the contest. And I know David, for example, is always updating and, and tinkering with the software that runs this club. We appreciate his diligence. But be aware that sometimes things can go wrong. And we really appreciate everyone for being here tonight. I'm probably not going to be here next week. Uh, tomorrow I go into uh, major surgery. I'm having my right hip replaced. And we'll see if that does any good for my leg and walking around and stuff. Back it's to you, Dave. Recovery, Andy. Um, we'll, we'll miss you. David, you want to bring up any more information about the... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I will actually... Probably everybody here is going to get an invitation to be an actual judge because you're showing up. And if you can't show up next week, I'll want you to be a judge. So... For the contest uh, and and over the, the next few days please do complete that ballot for the initial screening just so we have a a good ranking and and again the 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 videos um are sort of all over the place some of them are very professional some of them are a contest speech uh, a couple of them are people officiating at a contest and they're just trying to show you using some themselves using some slides and some technology. But I would just not take the scoring so seriously as much as here is somebody who I would like to see speak at our club. Uh, that's it. Pick your top three according to that, that criteria and vote. Uh, and we'll, we're going to have a great, great contest next week. And, uh, you know, I will be, you will get messages from me saying, I posted a Facebook message here. Would you please share it? If you could actually click on the share button, also click on the like button, and you can say, you know, you can you can go ahead and say, Dave, you're so wonderful, because that's really why I do it. Uh, but also, you should say, you know, this is a great thing to participate in, and uh, you know, I hope to get people there. So. Um, aside from that, we, we don't actually 